Guess who's back and better than ever? I know, I know. It be me. That was cringe. All right, does my hair look good, y'all? Like I had a bad wash day, but we're here. We're going through it. So let's just keep going through it. What's up, everybody? It's Jesse back again, finally, with another new video. I know it's been a while. I did take a break to get everything kind of revamped for this channel. I don't know if you noticed the intro. I spent a lot of time doing that. The outro is going to be just as good. But that's not what you guys are here for, clearly. For those of you who are new here, my name is Genesis Ventura. My initials are RDMS for those of you who are here for your sonography purposes. I make all kinds of videos here on YouTube about God, curls, and ultrasound. So if you've been on YouTube looking for any of those things or none of those things, this channel is the place for you. I do go by Jesse though, so that's Jesse with the G, drop the E. So if you have stumbled across this video or even searched this video up, then chances are you are in or are going through or are about to go through clinicals. So what are clinicals? Clinicals can be defined as kind of like an externship that you go through after or during your classes, whether it be sonography, x-ray, any other program that consists of you going out and shadowing other people in the field and gaining credits as you go. It's kind of like that hands-on type of actually working with patients because as good as textbooks and exams are, they're not really gonna prepare you for the real world, if you know what I mean. So the reason you clicked on this video is because you want to know how to survive clinicals. Well, let me tell you, I have a list of things that I learned going through clinicals and surviving. As you can see, I'm here and I am here to share them with you. First and foremost, before I get started on the list of things I want to share with you guys, I do want to remind you that you have made it this far for a reason. You are about to start or are going through clinicals for a reason. My voice keeps cracking and I keep like wheezing. I don't know. I might need some water. Hold on. All right, I'm back and all hydrated. I just realized I have Dairy Queen waiting for me, so I probably shouldn't take too long. So like I was saying, know that you made it all the way to clinicals for a reason. You are prepared. You are prepped. You have professors in your school that sent you to clinicals behind you that know that you're able to do what it is that you're going to be doing in clinicals. You are skilled enough. Now, clinicals can be brutal, but always have in your mind that I made it this far for a reason. I have the credentials, the skills, and the mindset it takes to make it through clinicals and graduate and become a sonographer or x-ray tech or CT tech or whatever you're going through clinicals for. Rest assured that there are people behind you that have your back and believe in you because if not, they would have never let you go through clinicals and work on real patients in the first place. So just know you're good enough. So let's get started on the list. Number one, even though you're there to learn, always keep in mind that every site you go to is like a job interview. So treat it as one. This means dress, speak, and act professional, you know the deal. They're watching you even though you're there to learn from them. They're also keeping an eye on you, the sonographers or the managers, directors, whoever's in charge of you and doing your evaluations. They're keeping an eye on you to see if maybe you could be a potential employee for them in the future. Show them what you know. Show them why you deserve to be there, even if it's maybe not a job or a place that you would want to be in in the future or you don't see yourself in the future. Keep those doors open, show them exactly what you know, and at the very least, impress them so that they have a good word to put in for you later on. They probably told you this in school, but I'm here to tell you again, cause what do I do better than repeat myself? The world of sonography is very, very small. Every person you meet holds the keys to doors of opportunities you wouldn't even begin to know. Even your classmates, you might see them five, 10 years down the line and they might be your boss or your manager or your director or your lead tech. You just never know what might happen and if you have met a sonographer chances are in the future you're going to see them again so as i mentioned before just be your best show your best show your worth as a sonographer because those people that you come across whether they're sonographers or a position of higher power you never know what doors can be opened for you just by showing who you are and what you're made of appreciate the sonographers that are taking their time to teach you now i don't know if you really know this but they don't pay sonographers extra to teach students they're taking time out of their work day to teach you and to equip you better for what's to come 
So show that you're appreciative, be present, don't be distracted, don't be on your phone. The one thing I can tell you is don't be that person that's on their phone while the scan's going on or looking at something else or seeming rushed or not wanting to be there. Pay attention, like learn their skills. Like they're literally putting their skills out for you to learn and take from. So be appreciative of that because not every sonographer is willing to teach and not every sonographer is a teacher. So try your best to help out, even when you're not asked to help out. Always ask, you know, in the beginning of the day or when there's downtime, is there anything I can do to help? If you see them um, getting prepped for an exam, you know where the linens are, you know where the gel warmer is, just kind of get all that stuff prepared for them, even if they don't ask you to. That's probably the best thing that a student can do to show that they're attentive and that they're there is to be proactive and to show that they're detail oriented and that they're able to help out and cut down on time that the sonographer would have had to you know, take the time and prep the bed or prep the machine. Just being helpful and saving five minutes of their time can really make an impact on how you look to them and how you look to potential job places. And kind of running off from that, take the time to learn their habits. I had an instructor that liked to use a certain transvaginal probe instead of the other one that other techs like to use. There might be techs who would like to use big towels or small washcloths when they're doing a scan or try to learn how many towels they use for a certain scan. Like for example, if they use one towel per leg on a Venus study, or if they like to use washcloths for an OB procedure, learn how they like their gel set up. Some sonographers like it in the gel warmer. Some sonographers like it on the machine. Just those little things that you see them kind of doing all the time and you see them build a preference to it. Make sure you keep that, you know, kind of noted in your mind. And then without them asking again, just do it. Once again, I'm going to actually really kind of throughout this video kind of insist on you remembering is that know that you are skilled enough and sonography is hard. I'm telling you, sonography is hard. You may think you know everything and there are going to be days where you're coming in and you're able to knock down all these exams in 15-20 minutes and you're finding all the pathology and you're putting your depth correct and you're feeling like on top of the world because you're getting proficiencies done and all that and then there are going to be other days that you feel like you don't know what you're doing but you always have to keep in the back of your mind that if you made it this far you are skilled enough and you do know enough and you're not trash and you're not a sucky sonographer and it's like you're not ever going to be a sonographer let me tell you that you don't ever really get out of that student mentality until at least a year or two into the actual field by yourself sonography can make a person that's been in the field 15 years to sometimes stop and think why am i in this field just because it's hard it's hard if it was easy like they say everybody would do it you're going to see things that the textbooks don't show you you're going to see things that you know everybody's body is different it wasn't until the other week where i saw my first bicornuate uterus and it looked nothing like the textbook showed me so best believe i was a little bit like what is this what the heck the best way to learn is to struggle. That's why this field is so hands-on in the learning aspect because you have to actually get your hands dirty and go in there and not know what you're doing for a good maybe five, 10 minutes. And the sonographer can be behind you just kind of watching you and letting you struggle. And then by the time you're like at the verge of tears, like I don't know what I'm doing, that's when they'll step in to help. If you have a sonographer like that that's teaching you, that is probably the best instructor that you will have in your whole entire career. My best instructor is the instructor that stood back and said nothing when I did my transvaginal exams and I was learning how to do them and I couldn't find the ovaries and I was just like sweaty and like nervous because I didn't know what I was doing and I felt like I was hurting the patient and she was just there chilling. And then she was like, do you need help? And then I said yes. And then she would place her hand on mine and guide me to where I needed to go. That's I can honestly say is my best instructor and actually my manager now because she did end up hiring me and I feel humbled to just have known a type of person like that that really takes the time to let you struggle and know that that's the best way to learn. There are going to be sonographers that aren't as patient and aren't as I guess they're just not prone to teach and they might want to do it and just have you watch or maybe have you back scan for like five minutes but just take all that experience and the scan time that you can take 
and just learn as much as you can from them. Realize that not everyone is at the same journey as you. You could be going to a site that has other students from other schools. I know there are schools that like while you're learning, like while you're going to lecture, you're also going to clinicals. So if you're in that type of program and you feel like you're not as good as the person who already took their lectures and then are going into clinicals knowing everything, it doesn't make them a better sonographer than you. It doesn't make them a better student than you. It doesn't mean that they know more than you. Because at the end of the day, nobody is better than anybody. The main goal here is to learn as much as you can and to become the best sonographer you can be for your patients. That's really the goal at the end of the day, is to make sure that you're equipped, that you're adept, and that you are the best you can be for the patients and for the doctors and for who you're going to work for and take care of. Please, for the love of God, do not be a stumbling block for yourself and for your colleagues. Unfortunately, you can't trust anyone 100%. Trust me, I learned from experience. Even if it's someone that is helping you out and may seem to have your best interest in mind, and maybe you overshared something about your life that they maybe mentioned to somebody else, maybe not with bad intentions, but then it just kind of shed a light to them of you that maybe you didn't want the other person knowing or just oversharing in general, your opinions about somebody in the workplace. You never know who's friends with who, or you never know who has, you know, nothing better to do, sadly in their job than to, you know, stir up stuff and like, oh, did you hear what the student said? Like, oh, who is she? you know you don't need any of that in your life especially in clinicals when you're already stressed out you know trying to learn anything that is told to you or you may kind of overhear just keep it to yourself like i know you might hear something about somebody and like you want to tell somebody and it's like it's not your place really it really really isn't you know you're a student stay the student as a student in my first clinical site, I was there for most of my instructor's interactions. Like if somebody would come in and ask her a question or, you know, just someone might have an issue and they would come to her about it. And I would be in the room and I would honestly not even try to listen. But, you know, there were some things that I was able to overhear, unfortunately. And the best thing really is to keep it to yourself because you don't want to be the stumbling block for that person or for your instructor for them to be like dang i really took the time to teach them and look how they did me now they're gonna leave and i'm gonna be stuck with this issue at work you don't want to be that person because like i said the world of sonography is small and you never know who you're gonna run into later on in the future i know i make memes and jokes and stuff about it but really you need to have a place to cry I had a place to cry at my at both of my clinical sites because clinicals are overwhelming. You have to be the strong student you are and know that you're able to do this and it's just a little trip in the road, but there are gonna be times or there are gonna be cases that you have to handle that you can't cry there in the moment. You can't show emotion like that in the moment. So have a dedicated place and time to just kind of let all your feelings out throughout the day whether it's before, during, or after clinicals. I, I sure to God hope you're not crying before clinicals at like six in the morning, but if you have to, so be it. Remember that this is temporary. Clinicals is temporary, and it's just going to be a part of the journey that gets you to be the sonographer that you are going to be and that you deserve to be, you know, if you put in the time. Above all else, try your best to make it fun and learn as much as you can. Remember, everybody that's around you and that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis is rooting for you and they're there to help you. So if they're believing in you, you can believe in yourself. But also, on top of believing in yourself, make time for yourself because mental health is important. Having a break is important. I know you want to be on go, go, go mode and try to get clinicals done and try to get your studying done and, you know, all of that. But at the end of the day, you can't function well for your patients if you're not taking care of yourself. And that's what I feel like is most important, whether you're in clinicals or in the actual career field. Now, again, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'm a sonographer and this video was geared towards sonography. But literally anybody that's in any type of clinicals, internship, externship, and wants to know how to survive that being a student and learning hands on to then being someone in their career field, actually doing the dang thing. I feel like this video is um, very helpful for them. At least I hope so. So that's all I have for you guys today. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what kind of other videos you would like, whether about sonography, about curling hair, and about God in general and your spiritual journey. If you have any questions, 
um, I'm here. Don't forget to follow my social media and um, still don't have an outro. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.